The Flyers lose it in overtime for the New York Islanders. Welcome into Post Game Live, presented by Curado Insurance. Ashton Sullivan, Al Morgani here with you. What a wave of emotions. I got to take a deep breath. It was up, and then it was very, very down, very fast. And Morgan Frost, the highs and the lows, and this is the inconsistency John Tortorella talks about in his game. Yeah, you got that big goal. You know, they, they had so many chances when they pulled the goaltender there, but the entire night, what a, it was just drama filled from the goaltending change. Fedotov played so well. Islanders then to control the game. It, it had everything in it except the ending that you wanted. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, in a race like this, that point is so big. On the other hand, it was so big when Frost scored the goal to secure at least one. So there's a lot to pick apart in this. There's a lot to like, especially right here late. The Islanders kept icing the puck to try to get away. And then Frost, you know, he's, he's such a dynamic player. But he gets in that dirty area there and doesn't panic in this situation. Pretty good play to keep it in. And the Flyers did it again and again, kept it in. Good decision to shoot the puck. And then Frost wins the battle and you see the excitement level. He's a guy that you can... You can get on the ice and no special things can happen. And I, that bench is as excited as I've seen it all year right there. Pretty good shot and then good good positioning by Frost to keep with it, stay with it, go in, get the goal, and get chased down for the celebration there. Good heads up play by somebody who just came back in the line up there. Almost a tip right there in front. But then control it with all the blue sweaters all around you. No panic at all. Take the celebration at the bench and we're thinking... This is going to be so sweet. We're going to get an extra one. Everything's going too good. It has to be the great ending. Yes, and it was at that moment. You saw the Wells Fargo Center. You saw that bench reaction. We heard it from in here, the crowd. It was an awesome moment. And it doesn't. we can't overstate the impact of Jamie Drysdale, his first yep. game back. Had a rough mistake on that first goal for the Islanders. But then to come back and get that shot on net, just trying to get some kind of traction in front. Yeah, and we saw it, Ashton, because the goaltender pulled. And you, you won fate, and they did a good job on the faceoffs to continue to win there and keep the puck in, in the pressure and the Islanders got a couple of breaks I thought on the icings going the Flyers way but then once they're there they won battles won battles kept it in and then Drysdale we're screaming in here you know to get the shot through trying to move it back and forth he gets that shot through and leads to the uh, getting them into that big overtime right and you look at this Flyers team and you we talk about the third period and how they won that third period they outshot the Islanders but we're going to go back and look at how it could have been a much cleaner game the amount of turnovers Al especially as of late in this five game losing streak now they're definitely concerning yes and the, there were periods of the game they cleaned it up as they went along but it was it was unusual to see what happened in this game they make that goaltending change the place was electric they bring in Fototov and he makes such big saves early and you thought they're gonna feed off of this energy but then for whatever reason they lost it and the Islanders took over the game and the goaltender played I mean it was a strong strong introduction to Philadelphia for Fototov so I think I, I thought, okay, they'll get this back, they'll get it back. I really thought they'd, they'd ride that wave of energy throughout. Islanders took it over and made the goaltender make some huge saves. Yes, it was definitely a big win for the Islanders who now are within four points of the Flyers in that playoff race. And now let's go to the crossover, welcoming in J.J. and Boosh. And Boosh, I got to ask you, we got Ivan Fedotov going into the game in the second period. How do you think he did basically just being thrown into the deep end there? I thought he was tremendous. Um... I, I was really impressed with his poise, uh, his puck handling, his skating ability to get to pucks. Uh, he didn't look nervous at all. I mean, he was ahead on plays. Uh, from what I saw in, in the two periods plus, th this is a good goaltender. This is a guy who's ready to play at the NHL level. And it would be easy to come in here and, and, and be overwhelmed and be nervous in a situation like this, yet uh, thrown right into the fire. And I, I thought he was exceptional. Um, I have no fear of playing him uh, in the next game or any, any of the upcoming games, just considering the fact that he's had so little practice time, the travel to get here and put him in a tough spot. I, I thought he was exceptional. Yeah, only mistake I think he made was going to the wrong net. <laughs> yeah, the you're right. right. Time, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> he had no chance, I don't think, of the two goals that beat him and, and did make some big saves. And the, the part that uh, really impressed me, I had heard he could handle the puck a little. We, we saw that he could. And also his athleticism, uh, which you see in, in different areas, going out to get pucks, even getting off the ice in a delayed penalty call, how quickly he got off the yeah. ice. The, the guy is big, but but he's not you know a big lug out there. He's, he's a guy who's a, an athlete. So it uh, could be a real bonus for the Flyers down the stretch. It'd be interesting to see who gets the call uh, in Buffalo on Friday night. We're you surprised, guys, after he comes in, they get the goal. It looks like all the energy is going the Flyers' way, and then they let it slip back to the Islanders. I, I thought that would be disturbing, not be able to ride that energy throughout the rest of that middle period. 
Yeah, it really surprised me because the building was buzzing. I mean, they, they were buzzing when he went out to just play the puck. Yeah. They, they were obviously fully on board with, with Ivan, and, and then he made some big saves, and you thought, okay, they're gonna, the Flyers are going to build off of that. But they, they got the goal from Sanheim and did not have another even-strength shot the rest of the period. Scott Lawton's uh, shot on the power play was their only period, shot the rest of that period. So that was, I thought, concerning. The Islanders did play extremely well in that second period. I mean, they were giving the Flyers very little room to breathe, but the bottom line is I thought the Flyers would have a, a big boost from Fedotov making those saves. It didn't yep. seem to happen. Yeah, that 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 is a little concerning. You know, you, you get goaltending change, you get a, a jolt of energy in the building, uh, you get the early goal, looks like momentum's going in the right direction, but I think you do have to give credit to the opposition here. Uh, Patrick Waugh, when he, when he took over this team, he wanted them to be more aggressive. He wanted them to be more on their toes. Uh, and it's not all about defending. It's about checking the puck back in a, in, a, in a manner where then they can transition and get to offense. And I thought they did that in the second period. I thought the Flyers were the better team in the first. Islanders much better in the second period. Give the Islanders credit in that regard. And obviously, the I think the Islanders went into a shell in the third period and tried to defend their way to winning the hockey game. But, yeah, the fact that the Flyers did not respond to the uh, early saves by Fedotov and the early goal by Sanheim was a little bit of a head-scratcher to me. I think that was a missed opportunity in the second period for this team. A tough loss for the Flyers tonight. J.J. Bush, thanks so much. We will talk to you guys on Friday. And now we have to show you how the Islanders won this game in overtime very quickly in overtime. We're going to take a look at Brock Nelson's winning goal here and you see the crucial play by Morgan Frost there. Yeah, Morgan Frost mishandles uh, the pass over and with two on the goalie, basically. And uh, there's not much chance there. Pretty good shot. Goaltender, the much, much chance on this. Nice pass over and sends it past the goaltender. And, Big, big point for the uh, for the Islanders trying to stay in the picture, if you will, and for the Flyers. That would have been, in addition to just the additional point, I just think the overall feeling, if you'd had that extra point, would have been so, it would have left this ecstatic uh, with what happened here with the goaltender. Nothing, you know, I actually think that the goaltending change was to get the team going. Ayrson let in a bad goal. Yeah. But I do think a lot of this was, let's get some energy here. And it, and it worked. So if this had carried over and actually won the extra point here, it would have been a whole better feeling coming in here after the game. Right. And you snap that losing streak. And now that is five straight losses in a row for the Flyers. So we go downstairs and hear from Noah Cates. Yeah, that was a tough second for us. Um, you know, just not getting pucks in, not playing to our identity. And um, you know, we kind of regrouped, I thought, pretty well. Um, kind of did that to them in the third and uh, paid off in the last minute there. But, um, yeah, we obviously can't have minutes like that uh, coming down the stretch here, especially against a team like that. Obviously, you guys are aware of the situation that comes in to start the second. Is there a little bit more emphasis on playing? You know, do you play more conservatively? Do you, or did that happen maybe some un un unconsciously? Or? I mean, there should have been. Obviously, we kind of left him to dry, and he, he did amazing. He had some huge saves, so... Um, really props to him for you know stepping in and um, you know taking care of us in that second. But yeah, we, we definitely should have recognized the, the situation, him coming in, a bunch of different things, and uh, you know gotten pucks deep and you know kind of played to our game instead of you know kind of turning into a track meet and let them kind of uh, hem us in. Did Uh yeah, I mean it's a good start. Obviously to get the first goal and then um, they get two kind of quick there, so. Um, you know, we're kind of battling back again, but obviously a big goal to start the second and um, just just a close game. Uh, obviously, our starts have been, you know, an emphasis for us and to get the first goal is always big, but, um, you know, it's just you can't let, you know, one minute slip away and they get two goals or, you know, the second period where uh, we get hemmed in and we only get a couple shots that happen, um, especially this late in the season. Was there like a point in the second period? Because obviously, Travis scores the goal. You guys have couple really strong shifts after and it seemed like once Barzell had that breakaway I know I makes the save but it just seemed like from that point on they controlled yeah um I think uh, the TV timeout maybe we need to take a breath and you know reassess kind of what we need to do um I think that was getting pucks in and we kind of just couldn't couldn't get that couldn't get under a four check and um yeah I think we just need to kind of recognize that whether it's at a TV timeout or uh, before your shift just kind of what we need to do to calm the game down and I'll uh, get some momentum back on our side Noah Cates with a goal tonight in the Flyers' loss in overtime. Stay with us post-game live, presented by Curado Insurance, looking at the goaltender's play and showing you the updated playoff standings.